Hey, grade 10. So in this lesson, I just want to go over the transformation of quadratics. Uh, so if you recall, I gave you a handout here, uh, transformation of quadratics, and I hope that you were able to do most of the activities by yourself. Uh, so in the first part of it, they just want you to graph y is equal to x squared. And then in the second question, um, I want you to try to figure out what is happening with the transformations of that original parabola. Um, so what I wanted you to do, you can always do a table of values for this, but I actually wanted you to use uh, technology to speed up the work a little bit. Um, and I think by using technology and doing all these graphs side by side, you can see more clearly the effect of the different variables. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph all five of these together, and then I want you to kind of compare them. So I'm going to go to decimals now, and I'm going to show you what the graphs look like. And again, to graph a quadratic relation on decimals, all you need to do is go to the commands right here. So I'm going to command number one, and I'm just going to type in y is equal to x squared. And don't forget that um, if you don't know how to use the square button on here, you can um, look for the up arrow and then put two. Or the other thing you can do is use the keyboard if you're using uh, an iPad or a cell phone and you're just going to be looking for this button right here. So you're just going to press that and it just squares it there. So this is the graph of the original parabola that we have. Y is equal to X squared. And this is actually the graph that we're going to be comparing all the other graphs to. This is the main one that we start with. And I'm just changing the axis so it's a little bit more clear there. Um, so the first thing we notice, obviously, it is it is uh, parabolic, it is symmetric, and in this case, the vertex, the highest or the lowest point, is at zero, zero. So what happens if we change this to a negative x squared? So we notice that if we put a negative in front of the x squared, all that happens is it reflects on the x-axis. So here's the x-axis right here, it just gets reflected. Um, and then we are asked to compare it to the graph of 1 over 2 and again if you want to do fractions if you just put a dash there it'll actually automatically create a fraction there for you and you get 2 now keep in mind I mentioned this already do not keep writing uh, X if you do that you get a completely different graph which you're gonna learn about in grade 12 you just have to make sure that you move your cursor to the right and you're gonna write X and then you're gonna be looking for the square button right there so just looking at uh, the blue graph and the purple graph and I can actually just temporarily turn off the green graph there um, you can kind of see them side by side and you'll notice a couple things first of all they have somewhat the same uh, characteristics they're both opening up but one thing we notice is that the purple graph compared to the blue graph is a lot is a little bit wider and to be specific what we notice is that the y coordinates are actually half of the y coordinate values of the blue graph so as an example the y coordinate of the blue graph here is one, and then the y coordinate of the purple graph is now a half. The y coordinate of the blue graph here is at four, and the corresponding y coordinate in the purple graph will now be two. So we can see here that the y coordinates of y is equal to a half x squared are simply just half of the y coordinates of y is equal to x squared. So we can see here that the graph has been compressed vertically by a factor of a half. Now let's look at what happens when we put a negative in front of the half. So if I put a negative in front of the half, the only difference here is that it now gets reflected, just like we saw before. So I'm just going to erase this graph where I can mute it, but in this case, I'll just erase it. And I'm gonna draw out the graph for uh, y is equal to two x squared. So let's compare this graph with uh, the blue original graph here, y is equal to x squared. So we first notice that they, once again, it opens up just like before. And that kind of makes sense because we said that if the leading coefficient is positive, then it will open up. So we can see here that there's a positive number, so it's going to be opening up this way. We notice that the y coordinate of the red graph 2x squared is double the corresponding y coordinate of the blue graph y is equal to x squared. So let's just show a couple examples. So in this one, we see that the y coordinate is 1 and the corresponding y coordinate in 2x squared is gonna be two. The y coordinate for the next one here is four, and we see that the corresponding y coordinate in the red graph of, of y is equal to 2x squared is eight. So we can see here that the y coordinates are doubled. So we can say that the graph of y is equal to 2x squared is simply the graph of y is equal to x squared, but it is 
vertically stretch by a factor of two. And of course, if I put a negative in front, we can take a guess. It will simply just reflect on the x-axis. Now that we have compared the graph of y is equal to x squared to a couple different graphs, we can make some general statements here. And it's probably best if we compare y is equal to x squared to a general parabola that has a variable a that fluctuates from negative numbers to positive numbers. So what we will do is we will simply write in the second command line here, y is equal to a. And remember that as soon as I start typing it in, uh, it'll ask me if I want a slider for this. I will actually say I want a slider. And I'm just going to complete this. I'm going to write ax squared. So obviously the first one here, we see that when a is equal to 1, uh, we simply just have the same parabola. Nothing, nothing special happens there. Just to avoid any confusion, I can also change the color of the graph here. Uh, so I'm going to make this uh, color red just so it stands out uh, differently from the original graph y is equal to x squared. So let's, start, let's see what happens as I change the value of a. So originally we have the a value of 1 and we can see here that it's the same graph as the original uh, parabola y is equal to x squared. But as I increase the a value, I'm going to notice that the, pr that the graph uh, becomes stretched vertically. So if, for example, the a value is 5, that means that all the y coordinates would be increased by a factor of 5. So it would be multiplied by 5. And we can see here that the more I increase my a value, the more, uh, the more vertically stretched it becomes. It becomes thinner and thinner and thinner. Uh, what happens if I go the other way around? So what, if, what happens if I go less than 1? So let's just keep checking here. So as I go less than 1, we actually notice that it becomes wider. So if we have a small positive fraction or decimal, so between 0 and 1, we're actually going to notice that it's going to become flatter. Uh, so exa as an example, if the a value is 0 0.1, that means all the y coordinates are multiplied by 0 0.1, which means they become smaller, which means the graph looks wider. So we can see this in the red graph. And of course, what happens when we go to the negative numbers? So as soon as we go to the negative numbers, we essentially see the same pattern, except that it's reflected on the x-axis. So we can see here that when a is equal to, for example, negative 0.4, the graph still has become more wide. It's uh, compressed vertically, but it's, but it's also reflected on the x-axis. And of course, what happens when we go past the negative 1? So if it becomes smaller than negative 1, then it actually goes back to what it was doing originally. It's actually going to be stretched vertically. The only difference now is that it has been reflected on the x-axis. So as an example, let's say that it goes to negative 3. We will actually notice that the y coordinates have actually been multiplied by negative 3, but because it is there's a negative in front, it's also reflected on the x-axis. So instead of just going up by 1, as an example over here, from 0 to 1, it is now going down uh, by 3 from 0 all the way down to negative 3. So we can see here that it's still stretched vertically, but it's also reflected on the x-axis. And just another little fun thing here on decimals, if you actually click on this little play button, it will actually fluctuate between all the different A values. So I always find this kind of fun to look at and just for you to kind of see the effect of the A value as we switch from positive and negative numbers. For question 2B, they are then asking us to see the effect of changing the H variable in the vertex form. So in this case, we're trying to figure out what happens when we switch the value of this h variable right here in the equation by graphing out y is equal to x squared, then y is equal to x minus 2 squared, and then finally uh, y is equal to x plus 2 squared. So we go back to decimals here, and I'm just going to erase these graphs here. We don't need them anymore, and I'm just going to keep the first graph there, y is equal to x squared, because once again, we always compare all our transformations to this original graph here. Uh, so I'm first going to uh, draw the graph for y is equal to x minus 2 squared. And I'm going to change the color so that it's actually different. So you can see the difference there. So I'm going to make this red. Uh, so first thing we notice is that the only difference between these two graphs is that the, uh, the red graph is simply shifted to the right by two units. We can see here that 0, 0 got moved to 2 and 0. Uh, we can see here that 1 and 1 got moved to 3 and 1. And as another example, negative 1 and 1 got moved to 1 and 1. 
So we can see here that the only difference here is that we shifted the graph two units to the right. And uh, in this case, I'm actually going to draw all three graphs together just so you can see um, the effect more clearly. So I'm going to write y is equal to x plus 2. And then if I want to square it, I can use the keypad over here or I can click on the up sign to create the exponent 2 there. Uh, so now I can see all three graphs side by side. And once again, in this green graph, I notice that the only difference between the green graph and the original blue graph of y is equal to x squared is that the graph has been shifted to the left two units. So we have gone two units to the left. We went from 0, 0 to negative 2 and 0. Uh, we went from uh, negative 1 and 1 to negative 3 and 1 and so on. So we can see here that all the coordinates have just been shifted to the left two units. So this is the part that really throws everyone off. Uh, it almost seems counterintuitive. Um, we kind of can see here that um, it would make more sense that it would move to the left if it's negative. But in this case, we notice that since we are subtracting off the x coordinate, uh, it actually moves it to the right. So it, the, just watch out for these signs. And we actually notice that this is something that is going to happen in general for all uh, parabolas that are of this form. Um, and once again, just like I did before, I'm going to erase these and I'm actually going to draw a general parabola just so you can start to see a bit more of the effect of the h variables uh, changing from positive to negative. Uh, so I'm going to write y is equal to, and then in brackets, x minus h. And as soon as I start typing this in, uh, decimals will ask, ask me if I want a slider. I do want a slider in this case. And then I'm going to square this. And what I'm going to do is just show you uh, step by step the effect of switching the h variable. Uh, so initially we had h is equal to 0 because there was nothing being subtracted from x. And we can see here that this just gives you the original y is equal to x squared graph. And I can see here that as h increases, which means that I'm going to be subtracting a positive number, uh, it moves my graph to the right. And as h goes towards negative numbers, so as soon as h is a negative number, which means I'm subtracting a negative, which looks like I'm adding a number when I put this in the equation here, that means that the graph is simply moving to the left. And once again, for fun, you can always press that play button so you can see the overall effect that H is having. So I can see here that when I subtract a negative number, uh, which will make it look positive, it's actually moving to the left. And when I subtract a positive number, it's actually moving to the right. Finally, let's look at 2C here. So it's asking us to consider the effect of adding the variable K here at the end of the equation. Um, and so we're trying to see what happens to the original graph of y is equal to x squared. So once again, we go back to decimals and we erase these two lines. We don't need them anymore. And underneath uh, y is equal to x squared, I'm going to be graphing out y is equal to x squared plus 2. So I just want to see the effect of adding on a k value at the end there. Uh, so I can see here um, the direct comparison that I end up getting a parabola that still opens up. Um, the only difference is that the, all the points have shifted up by 2. So we can see here that the vertex 0, 0 has now moved to this new vertex 0 and 2. So this uh, point right here, 1 and 1, has now been moved to 1 and 3. This point, negative 1 and 1, has now moved to negative 1 and 3. So we can see here that all we did by adding the 2 on there was shift the graph 2 units up. And what happens if I have y is equal to x squared minus 2? So we can see here, and I'll put a different color for this, so we can actually see an effect. Um, I'm going to make this one green. We can see here that this graph has simply moved the graph uh, two units down. So we went from 0, 0 to 0 and negative 2, uh, from 1 and 1 to 1 and negative 1, and from negative 1 and 1 to negative 1 and negative 1. So we have just simply shifted the graph two units down. And once again, for good measure, we can always uh, compare this original graph to a general uh, quadratic uh, of the form x squared plus k. And we can add a slider for k. And once again, we notice that when k is positive, we simply move the graph up. And when k is negative, we simply move the graph down. I hope this helps summarize all the different effects of the a, h, and k value. 
Uh, so in summary, we know that the A value will stretch or compress our graph vertically, and it will also reflect it on the x-axis if it is negative. The H value just moves it to the left or to the right. And finally, the K value that we just looked at moves the graph up or down.